From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Environmental activists are urging the Supreme Court to permit a receiver to seize possession of Nygaard Key, which was last valued at $14 million, and sell it to satisfy its owner's Bahamian legal debts. Save the Bay's in court documents is seeking court orders for delivery up of vacant possession and the property's subsequent sales to settle $412,000 in legal costs and certificates of taxation awarded in its favor and against Peter Nygaard. The unpaid debts stem from successful judicial review challenges to Nygaard Key's illegal expansion, which the Canadian fashion designer undertook over several decades in doubling his property's size, despite not possessing the necessary approvals and permits from the government. Fred Smith QC, Save the Bay's legal director, said the environmental group had been forced into litigation yet again after Mr. Nygaard, who was still languishing in a Canadian jail as he fights extradition to the U.S. on sex trafficking and other abuse-related charges failed to respond to their civil requests for payment. Official opposition leader Philip Brave Davis says there are a lot of issues surrounding how public funds have been spent during the Minutes administration's term in office that need a closer look. Mr. Davis, who is the Public Accounts Committee chairman, said he had been waiting for House Speaker Halston Mutri to rule in a manner that favored the group. Asked if he believed the parliamentary body has sufficient time to properly delve into matters of interest, Mr. Davis said, quote, Time matters not, but there are a lot of issues relating to the expenditure of public funds and to whom it may have been expended to. This includes the choices in respect to expenditure that we need to look at. Mr. Davis said he hoped to call a meeting next week with a view to set the PAC's agenda. A security guard was shot during an attempted armed robbery at a money transfer company yesterday. Police said shortly after 3 p.m., officers were called to the scene of an attempted armed robbery, which occurred at Cash and Go on Rosetta Street. On their arrival, investigations revealed that a lone gunman entered the building and accosted two security officers. A struggle followed, and as a result, one of the guards was shot in his right hand. The suspect then left the establishment and ran in a western direction along Rosetta Street. The injured guard was taken to the hospital and is listed in stable condition. Due to the low number of COVID-19 cases on Grand Bahama, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has revealed that by this weekend, residents can start to see a relaxation of the curfew. He indicated that Grand Bahama's curfew may be pushed ahead one hour to 11 p.m. GB could come out of COVID problems as we are seeing now, Dr. Minnis told reporters on the island yesterday. Dr. Minnis noted that Grand Bahama will continue as is with its COVID-19 protocols. In terms of COVID, he is optimistic that Grand Bahama will continue to do well. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, lawyers for Donald Trump opened his impeachment defense Friday by accusing Democrats of waging a campaign of hatred against the former president and manipulating his words in the lead up to the deadly siege of the U.S. Capitol. Their presentation included a blizzard of their own selectively edited fiery comments from Democrats. In hours of arguments, the Trump legal team characterized the impeachment case as a politically motivated witch hunt, an outgrowth, they said, of years of efforts to drive him from office and they sought to reduce the case to Trump's use of a single word fight in a speech preceding the January 6th riot. Chinese state TV included dancers in blackface portraying Africans in a holiday gala for the second time in three years, prompting criticism online as Asia welcomed the Year of the Ox with muted festivities amid travel curbs to contain renewed coronavirus outbreaks. The African Song and Dance performance Thursday came at the start of the Spring Festival Gala, one of the world's most watched TV programs. It included Chinese dancers in African-style costumes and dark face makeup beating drums. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure system centered east of the area will continue to dominate weather conditions across the chain of islands today. Beachgoers are still being advised to exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at east and south coast beaches. For all areas, it'll be mostly sunny, breezy, and warm, with the chance of a few scattered showers this afternoon, variable cloudiness with a few isolated showers, mainly across the northwest Bahamas tonight. A small craft caution remains in effect for the central and southeast Bahamas. Small craft operators can also expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 15 knots in the northwest Bahamas and east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots in the central and southeast Bahamas over open waters. Seas 3 to 5 feet in the northwest Bahamas and 4 to 7 feet over the ocean in the central and southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 84 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 7 
72. The sun will set at 6 p.m. and will rise tomorrow morning at 645. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper. Now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.